everybody. I'm doing a 60 minute home cleansing session for a client. And this client has been going through some psychic attack experiences. So we're gonna do some energy work on the home to clear out any type of negative entity type um, vibrations. I'm gonna go ahead and read the goals here and then I'm gonna be getting started. Okay, so goals are clearing of the house, basement, all rooms above the house and side of the house and of the two cars as one was heavily tagged by lower astral astrals including the entire house okay let me just really absorb here the request okay house basement all rooms above the house side of the house okay okay all right, here we go. Let me turn this volume off here. I'm ready. <clears throat> okay, let me see. So when I walk in, it is quite silent right now, but I can hear the sound of a creaking door. And it's a door it also sounds like a creaking cupboard door, but it's an actual door you can walk through. I see both images. Opening a cupboard door and opening an actual door. And when I get into the home, everything literally stops. Everything stops at the sound of the creaking door and then literally no more sound. There's no more movement, no more sound. Everything literally stops. Hmm. There's some major huge barriers. I mean, you could just define this as the front door, let's just say. I still see a version of myself as like there's two me's here. One me is opening like the front door, let's say, to walk inside. While simultaneously, another me is also opening a cupboard door. And everything stops once the doors are a certain angle open. And then there's the creaking noise and then nothing more. Now, it's like a giant energy block here. There's a reason why there's a du duplicate of myself. There's a reason why that exists. We're going to have to look into it. But there's just, I can't move into the house. I can't actually enter into the house. There's like some major energy blocks here. <laughs> Okay, so when I walk in here, you know, I'm, I'm still stuck at the door, but I'm kind of projecting my consciousness around more. And I see that there's a, a paralleling between um, what I'm experiencing here, entering into the home on the energy side of things, and then your head as well. So your head is jammed or blocked. Your home is jammed and blocked. That's what there's a parallel here. So what I'm going to do is just relax this space down. So when I relax the space down, it will relax down your mental body too. All right, lots of anger going on. Just relaxing things down. And then I just hear um, just argumentative type of sounds. And your mind is full of a lot of, um, they look like army, like army ants, ants in like little army outfits. And they even have swords and some have guns and some, but they're all like in the military green color. And there's like, they're pouring out of your third eye like army ants. And it's a lot of creativity even. All right, so a lot of a hurt and upset going on here too. And then your throat has also got a really big jam. All this stuff is interconnected with the home. So I'm just right now, I'm like, there's just a lot of uh, energy sensitivity. So I'm just allowing them to express themselves. There's so much stress here. You're enduring so much stress. And uh, I'm just letting this uh, come out. Okay, so I'm healing your home. I'm also healing you too. Uh, I'm just letting this out. 
It's okay. You're a, you're a prisoner for sure. I mean, there's something about a self-imprisonment or prisoner of your own home. There's like a, pr a prisoner image. I see you sitting and you emanate, I am a prisoner. And then you're in your home. And you, you desperately want out. You desperately want to be free. And it's like nobody will let you out. And I say it's okay. It's okay because you're not alone here, are you? And I just reach my hand out to touch your hand. And I say, why don't you just take some time to relax? There's no need to feel like a prisoner here. Because if you feel like a prisoner, now there is a locked or an unlocked door that you are waiting for. But if you don't feel like a prisoner, then you can come and go as you please, right? Oh, wow, you're suffering a lot from, from this. Ex there's an, a total energy experience going on here. And it's very hard. It's a very hard thing for you to go through. Okay, we're in the next uh, energy jam. This has a lot. This is your house. But what is going on in your house is also interconnected with what you're processing in your own experience. So as I clear your house out, I clear you out. Um, it's going to bring everything to, into balance, okay? It's, you're going to feel so much better. All right, so again, I mean, I'm, I'm able to get my foot in the door like I'm entering in, but it's just sort of a, like there's walls up. There's energy walls up. They're invisible. I'm walking in them, but I get stuck in them as well. So I'm struggling to move about in here. So you can imagine with this type of jam walking in your front door, um, you've got quite a jam within yourself too. And I'm still stuck at this uh, cupboard. Like, I've never moved. I'm just stuck here. All right, there's going to be some weird stuff next. Because I, I'm just allowing my more of my... There's different levels of my own energetic identity. So I'm, I'm coming in as more of a physical version of my energy self. And that's stuck at the door. But then I'm going to project an even lighter version of my energy self in order to move through the block so we can see what else is here. And um, I keep seeing this one ant. And, you know, there were all these this sort of army ants pouring out. That there's this one in particular, full size, looks like a human, but is an ant in a military outfit. Even has like a white mustache, <laughs> is looking at me. And all I can think about is creativity. But I see sort of a swirling going down a hallway of lots of um, images of different faces. Lots and lots and lots of different faces. And it swirls all the way down the hallway. That this ant, this army ant is here. <sighs> okay. Um, a lot of anger, a lot of angry feelings going on. So this, this is also a reflection of you. So I'm allowing this army ant to transform into yourself. And I allow this part of yourself to see the the part of you that is imprisoned, you know, the prisoner within your own home, the prisoner within yourself. And so we're going to start to see more of what the real issue is going on here. <clears throat> this is a total internal battle. So this army ant is now you. And you are looking at yourself over here at the wall. And everything that you say to yourself is not heard or interpreted. So it's just like your mouth is moving, but no sound is coming out. 
and that other part of you against the wall, the prisoner hears nothing. And there's total energy jams all the way through. Like, there's no getting anything anywhere because nothing can move through here. And I ask this, this you that was once an army and I say, did you want to actually speak to that part of yourself? Do you want to talk to the prisoner? I want you to answer me honestly. Yeah, you, you can talk to me, but you are holding back on saying anything. And you're changing your image and you start to look kind of like a vampire. And I say, why are you afraid to talk to me? Why are you afraid to tell me what's going on here? Do you want to feel better? Or do you want to remain the same? And I reach my hand in to touch the heart of the vampire, which is also a reflection of yourself. And he's got a lot of um, bad ideas kind of thing. Like when my hand comes in to touch his heart, he sends a lot of uh, dark vines to come and swirl around my hand in order to like trap me kind of thing. Um, to hurt me, he tries to stick vines to take out from his heart into my hand. Like, tries to, like, rip my hand off in a way. But I'm just relaxing here. It's just fear. It's just his own fears. And... You know, he's projecting a lot of negative ideas. I mean, he's telling me how bad he's going to make sure it gets around here. He's telling me that he's going to make it so scary. He's going to make it really, really scary. He keeps saying this. And I say, no, you're not. You're not going to make it anything. You should feel really sad right now. <sighs> because you are very sad. Isa paused for a minute. He keeps changing his image to try to look like something else. I say, you are yourself and you feel sad inside. But we gotta find out what is going on beneath the surface of all of this. Because I will say at the conscious level, you can be enduring a real um, difficult experience, a very energetically sensitive nightmare. But deep down inside, you have other parts of yourself that are orchestrating events. And the events can all be orchestrated by yourself. Complete self-annihilation learning. So it's not being done to you more than you are doing it to yourself. Which is a really hard thing to to become aware of it's really hard to become aware of it but it's actually the best news I could possibly share with you <laughs> it's just self-love and it's choosing to feel a relationship with love instead of choosing to feel a relationship with the suffering it's being human we are constantly surrounded with encouragement to feel suffering encouragement to feel neglected, to feel alone, to feel sad, to feel afraid. We're constantly encouraged to feel so many lower level vibrations, but we're not constantly encouraged to, to reach out for love, to love to reach back, to believe and trust in love, to know that love is there, to wonder what love could feel like in a way that you don't have any more relationship with suffering anymore because suffering really isn't what we are here to do. We're here to experience pure love. And so we have to we have to transform your relationship with the, um, the that reality has to be a suffering reality. We have to transform that into reality is heavenly. And I am heavenly towards myself. because this is a jump started thing. like this is a internal learning thing. 
and it's being projected outward. So it's now becoming a reality, okay? But the reality is when we heal you, your inner essence, your home heals, everything in your life is going to heal, okay? But the next thing here, I've got to help this part of yourself just let go. I have to help this part of yourself choose another pathway, okay? So just I'm just allowing that to happen here. He, I mean, I could talk, I, I don't have to tell you these things. I really want to focus on positive stuff, but you know, he's really insistent on um, showing me how bad it really is. And then, you know, so I can experience it and that my world is going to become hell and that all this scary stuff is now going to be a part of my life. And that will prove to me that he's not doing this, that this is a real thing. And it's like, why why are you still holding on to this this is you this has, this has nothing to do with me i'm just here to help you remember who you are what is it that hurts so bad inside yourself that this is the the approach that feels correct for you you're screaming you're yelling at me you're Telling me, you know, you're telling me, like, you're throwing books at me. You're, <laughs> you're like, really insisting here. Really insisting. <laughs> and it's like, I, I'm, not, I, I'm not seeing it. <laughs> so, you, okay, this is, this is a part of the problem here. You, there's something going on inside yourself but it's, it's not fully realized at the conscious level. So instead of stopping and saying, what is really going on here? And asking your heart, you're letting yourself get swept away by a tide that is turning into a river rapid that is turning into the Niagara Falls of River Rapids. And now you're drowning in it. And you don't want to let go because you want to continue to convince yourself this is really happening when actually you just need to just stop because it's done happening and now you can let it go and you can find out what's what's going on beneath the surface of you but sometimes if we get wound up in what we felt we resonated with and then we realize later that I don't know if it was really like that, but it feels like that, so it must be like that. And then we just start getting caught up with it is like that. And now it is like that grows and grows and grows and grows and grows into a real nightmare. When all we had to do was just say, wait a second, I'm just going to stop this right here. And I'm not going to have anybody else a part of what I'm going through. I'm just going to just stop this within myself and see how my life changes. See how my home feels different. See how I feel different. And I will say that this event is actually one of the most precious things that could possibly happen to you because you are going to become totally transformed on the other side of this. I can tell that it had to get this raw and this real and this extreme for you to hear another way. Now through this session, you're having a total self-realization moment here. And now you're having access to doing it differently in a way you've never been able to access it before. So sometimes life has to get really weird and really loud and confusing and horrifying for it, something deep down inside to finally reach the surface where it can be healed, everything can be restored back to normal, and you'll never ever fall into that ever again because you've reached the other side of it through the event itself, okay? Now, I will say, it is, it, I, you're quite good with energy, so this is a total reality that you're experiencing. However, it's not going to be for much longer, <laughs> okay? <laughs> because I'm going to help the deeper part of you self-realize 
we'll see what more we can find out about this thing so we can heal it and then everything your home is going to heal everything's going to heal but we're going to do so much more than just this okay we got plenty of time here to do stuff so all right the next thing i'm being shown here everything i'm doing is interconnected with your home but what is going on with your home energy is helping me to heal you too because your home is wise and your home does love and protect you just like your higher self okay now there's the next experience is there's a lot of marbles and they're brown rusted marbles is what it looks like in your stomach and this is really awful feeling Ugh. And it bothers my backside, it bothers my back of my head, it flutters, it's um, disorienting. Um, I feel like I'm losing it. There's a huge jam in the throat. Just gonna relax this down. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. You're so upset. You've been going through so much. You're still confused how you're actually creating this. I say, well, one cool thing is you're really good at working with energy. <laughs> but something inside you is setting off a, a self-inflicted punishment on a very loud and extraordinary level. So we got to heal that thing, and then now the self-inflicted punishment isn't necessary anymore. It's just a tool in order to help you find that thing, that wound. You're very wobbly and very... Um, it's going to take a lot of talking, a lot of coaxing, but you're not choosing to be totally on board with what I'm saying yet. I'm almost through, I'm almost through this weird level here with the stomach, the throat, back of the head, all that. It's all starting to almost phase entirely out and I'm moving into the next layer. And this next layer, it might as well be getting choked in the neck here with leather gloves, black leather gloves choking the neck. I see this. And there's a wall with these strange like, like, um... They're tubes that stick out like they could shoot darts through them. It's a wall and it's got like loads of these on it. So we're going to relax this on down. Because none of this is actually real here. Just going to relax this on down. You're sad, you're crying. He's saying, how can this be? I'm saying, I want you to say, okay, if this is, then why is this? Why is this? And I want you to know the answer to the question. So if you know the answer to the question, why is this? What is that answer? You show me a scene where you you say I am targeting myself and then you have many, many, these like odd tubes that are coming out and I just keep seeing darts being blown through them and there you are being choked by these gloves. Um, so all these, this whatever this is choking you vanishes but you're standing here and now you're at the will of all these darts that are going to shoot at you. But all the tubes turn into fingers and it's all your fault. It's all your fault. It's all your fault. And there's so many fingers and there's so much, it's all your fault going on here. It's like a total <laughs> collision of noise and um, it's just so awfully noisy in here. And the feeling of being um, set apart, singled out as the one to blame. It's awful. 
and it is like you are being murdered. <laughs> and when you're not actually dying, but the words, it is all your fault, is echoing like crazy, like a hundred people, a thousand people are all saying it um, at various times, um, but pretty much at the same time, they overlap, it's all your fault, it's all, and it's echoing, echoing, and it's all these fingers pointing at you. You can't die. And you feel like you are dying, but you can't die, and now you have to stand here and take this. And it's really awful. It's really, really awful. And this feels like uh, another lifetime where you are to blame. <sighs> and I see you becoming all the people that are pointing their finger and saying it's all your fault. You're becoming them, saying it to yourself. And now you're angry with yourself. And then the self that is sort of standing here taking this beating of disapproval from all these fingers and voices um, has no way to react to this because it feels completely alone and shunned. This is the internal experience that is going on inside yourself. On the energy side of things, this is actually happening in your energy field. And this is also echoing throughout what is the experience of your home. This is going to get a little bit worse now. The next scene is a, a very long kind of curved sword, like a, a, um, I don't know, like you would see in Aladdin. It's a curved sword. And I see you're lying down and the curved sword goes uh, right across your throat. Like it's going to just slowly, like um, a hot blade through butter, just slowly cut your head off. So this next scene is but it never actually goes into your throat. It just uh, threatens you. And it just stays right here. And so you can't actually get up or you're going to get up into the sword. You can't move. This is another threat. And you are trapped in the threat. And you aren't allowed to leave it either. You have to just sit still and endure the threat. This is awful. This is absolutely awful as well. You see what you're clearing out of your energy field? You're clearing this stuff out. Now, you're clearing out loud stuff like this. It's going to splatter all over the walls of your house and everything that is related to your life. Everything related to your life is going to feel also consumed by this because it's so loud in your energy field. It would be very hard to actually... Um, feel grounded and like yourself with this. This is a stuff coming up from inside of your soul journey and your timeline of experiences. It's rising up and it's really loud and it's being echoed and projected all around you. Then it's becoming a real reality. But I'm going to relax this because this too is an illusion, but it feels like a real thing. And this is how your energy field feels that this is really happening. You need lots and lots of hugs and support because this is just too much for one person. But I will say the part of you that is like insisting on you're going to make it suffering for everybody that's disappeared, okay? Because that's not really you speaking. It's what you is going through and getting lost in what you're going through speaking. So we're just um, erasing or just dissolving all these energies, okay? So we can clean it up. Feels better now. Feels good. <laughs> and, this, and this energy stomach feels uh, better, but it still looks like it has a notch um, in it. Like all those marbles kind of became one ball. And you have a tummy ache. But I will say we're actually in a state of improvement. <laughs> I'm just going to touch this ball. And it's very, 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 very heavy. But I'm able to actually lift it up and out of your stomach, okay? That creates a big positive energy shift. So just put it over there. And I'm going to stretch. Because your energy field is growing and expanding. 
Mm. Which is healing your home and your relationship with the energy of your home, okay? <sighs> ah, feels better. Your mental body feels a lot better too. Feels less congested. Okay, the next thing is we're walking into anger again. And it's like, um, it's in the, these curtains close and the curtains themselves are the anger that is like shutting but coming together because it's two curtains closing, but it's all anger that just whips from both sides and comes together. The anger does. Mm. I say there is no anger. And I just draw a pink heart on both curtains. There's only love here. There's only love. And you, I see you again crying and saying, please don't tell me this. Please don't tell me this. And you kind of like, this isn't me doing this. This isn't me doing this. I say, I... I, I understand, but I, I can tell, I can tell that in your energy field that the frequency of everything I'm running into is you. It isn't anything else but you. So the frequency of you is in the giant energy block, is in the creak of the door, is in the army ant, is in the prisoner, is in everything we've seen. Okay, gonna move to another scene here. You really trying to convince me here that there is something else here. And so I could give you, the, I mean, I don't need to give you the benefit of the doubt because I know there isn't anything else here. <laughs> and if I give you the benefit of the doubt, then now what am I doing here? I'm giving you the ability to be correct. And if I give you the ability to be correct, that allows you to continue to do this thing over and over again and destroy yourself and everything in your life. And that's not what's actually happening here. So let me, give me just a second. I'm going to um, just feel what my inspiration is inside myself. Because the thing is, is I don't want to keep running into parts of you that say, um, but this isn't just all me. I, ha I have to help these parts to see it in a different way. So I'm going to say to this part of you, I'm going to say, okay, I want you to show me something that I am not seeing, that you see that I am not seeing. So that way we can, I can feel this one out. And if this is something new, then we can resolve it. Okay. I want you to show me something. Okay, it has to do with a disease or an infection. And I see what is the inside of a body and it's covered in like a weird, um, like hair, a mold, mold, like black mold, but it's white and fuzzy. And it's uh, kind of wrapped around the stomach and there's weird spots and speckles and it looks like disease. And you say, look, look at this. And I say, okay. This is a really good thing to look at because this is um, suffering. This is suffering that you've been enduring. You show me an image of you. Um, this is really bad, okay? This is really, really bad. These are other lifetimes, just so you know. So this, this severe disease is a real legit other lifetime where you were suffering, okay? Severe suffering. You, you see what we're walking into here? These are the wounds that your soul has been carrying is trying to heal. So in the process of healing them, it gets really loud and, it, and somebody as energetically sensitive as you are now it can translate it as a lot of negativity. Because what are you going to do with lifetimes of suffering? lifetimes of suffering where you did you're the bad person you're the one to blame you're you're completely infected you know with the disease 
you know, you're the leper, you're the um, quarantined person now, you know. And so now again, the finger is pointing at you. So you have these lifetimes, right, that are that are memories, really, really loud memories. And they're pure, they're purging, okay, from your energy field. And it's freaking you out because you can feel it, but you're translating it as something. And we got to go into it and see what it, what, what else is here. And so... Now, the next one is pretty just gruesome. You know, you basically have a, um, a rope around your neck and um, instead of the horse ripping your arms and legs off, it's ripping your head off of your neck. And uh, this, this is, you're actually held down so your head can rip off of your neck. Like that, that's literally what this looks like here. That, that's going to take a minute for that to, to, to just vent out because the terror here. You kind of scream and you say, you know, what am I, a malfunctioning robot where people just need to rip your head off in order to get rid of you? Is that what I am? And I say, well, is that what you are? You have to decide for yourself if that is what you are. You're, you can't, you, you aren't recovering well from this one. You, you're, um, that trauma is just so unjust. <laughs> it's basically what we're working with here. Unjust traumas that you've endured in other lifetimes. Um, and the things that have been done to you. And it's interesting because if we're all a part of each other, then even if other people had done things to you, you're taking on the role of the other people doing it now to yourself in order to fully process through, to cycle through it all. And it's really loud, okay? It's very, very loud. But as we go through this here um, and helping your deeper essence to see and to cope and to come to terms with it all, all this stuff is going to quiet down, okay? And you're going to collect yourself again. And I feel strongly that w when you collect yourself from this experience, that you will actually take a major step forward and beyond so that the, this trigger or this endure, this thing that you've been enduring is not is never endured like this ever again okay like i feel like you you're taking a huge step of learning a huge learning step forward and you're going to do things differently okay you're already coming to peace with that image here and the unjust death it's an unjust death unjust death you keep showing me that I that it was unjust. You use the words unjust. People said that you did the wrong thing, but it was it was all an unjust punishment. It was unjust. Um, this it wasn't you. You were not to blame and to be blamed and to be be punished in this way. That it's just entirely unjust. Hold on a second, just just a second here. There's uh, this, something new happening, but I need to really focus on calming this down. Really, really focus on just, just healing this one because I got it. There's a next major big thing I'm walking into here. So I'm still. I just before I go too deep into that, I just want to make sure this is really relaxed. Really, it, it's okay, you know. This is for the learning. Okay, the next thing feels pretty awful. And this was another unjust event. Um, and this would not be anything you could possibly comprehend with your human mind. This could be on the level of, I mean, I'm just going to throw this out as an idea in order to try to understand what this memory is like. Let's say you're a human 
and then you're being abducted by alien beings, how in the world are you supposed to understand their form of thinking, their activities, their decision making, their communication style? Everything is foreign about it and terrifying at the same time. None of it makes any sense. And then you're supposed to come back and live a normal life. So this next memory is terrifying. None of it is relatable. How do you cope with it? And now just to live a normal life. But I don't know that you came back to live a normal life. Like this one, they aren't saying that it was some alien abduction lifetime. They're just showing me a scene and it makes me feel or reminds me of something like this, okay? And um, it's a spherical space and there's... <laughs> These are the images they're working with, but it translates differently in my emotions. Um, it looks like uh, Sleeping Beauty's uh, the evil uh, witch in Sleeping Beauty, like Maleficent. It's, it looks like Maleficent. And she's a very, very, there's a lot of evil energy that comes piercing through her eyes. She has a bird. And you cower before her. I mean, you are pathetically cowering. I don't think there's a such thing as a pathetically cowering person because when you're in that much fear, you just are in fear. And so you can't label that. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's an understandable fear. You are, but you're like, you're like belligerently cowering. Um, you're absolutely terrified. And she's sort of the maker or the designer of your nightmare. And she's smiling and she shows me um, all the messed up experiences that you're going to endure. And she's going to enjoy watching you suffer. And I say, why are you going to put up with that crap? Why are you going to do that? Why don't you say, oh, cool. Um, no. <laughs> uh, no. No thanks. See ya later. Not. I'm going my own way now. <laughs> you tell me that no, I can't just, I, I can't just leave. And I say, well, why can't you? Why can't you just say no? I, that's not, that's not what I want. Why can't you ever say no? And you say, well, it doesn't work that way. You don't always just get to say no and walk away with what, you, you know, if you don't agree with it, you don't just get to say no and walk away. And you say, well, why not? Why can't you just say no and walk away? And you say, because I owe her something. You owe her lifetimes of insane suffering? That is your debt to be paid? I say, you know what? I'm going to change your reality. The only way to truly complete a karmic cycle is through pure forgiveness, forgiveness of self, forgiveness of all actions, forgiveness of all time. There's nothing more that you actually have to do to reconcile karma except just forgive yourself and be at peace. That is how you truly move on from a cycle. So I just tell you, just you owe nothing to any nobody. You don't owe her anything. You don't owe yourself anything more than just say, why did I get myself in this situation in the first place? And you don't have to follow it all the way through. You actually don't. You don't have to follow this thing that you're going through all the way through until it kills you. When are you going to just say, no, I've, I've, I'm done now. I'm done. Now you've completed the cycle. You, what is it to see this all the way to the end? It, how far could it go, you know? So you're, you weren't able to stop this yourself, so you needed me to help you stop yourself from it, from it continuing to get out of hand. So 
So now this Maleficent is actually kind of a is just playing a role in order to encourage you to make your own choice here to continue to suffer or to stop suffering. And you do have all these other memories. But as we heal this whole thing, these memories heal and they don't, you're on a different cycle of learning. So it's interesting because um, you think there's just one timeline, right? So so as you move through a timeline, you can continue to cycle through the timeline over and over again. But as you learn to rise above the timeline itself, you enter into yet an entirely new timeline where technically nothing that you'd ever went through before ever existed. <laughs> because you've ascended to a new timeline where it was full of new events, totally different experiences. And that's what human ascension is. We're actually ascending to new timelines they're all interconnected anyway. And there's a bajillion different possibilities of ways that we've lived our life or, you know, however you want to look at it. But you're ascending to a timeline where all of that terror and suffering didn't actually happen. It always will have happened in an infinite universe. The infinite universe knows everything. And so, yes, it's not like we're just, um, you know, not giving any credit to what your soul's been through. We're just we're helping your human essence, your life, actually move out of that cycle because you don't have to work in that cycle anymore. Or you can continue to hold on to all this nightmare and say, yes, that really did happen, and you can stay in the cycle forever. Or it's not worth it. <laughs> my All my lifetimes were full of love and harmony. Now you actually ascend into a timeline where all of your lifetimes were full of love and harmony. But your soul is so vast that it carries with it all of the memories of everything that it's ever been. But you're just simply giving this version of time and yourself an opportunity to know what joy feels like. And you don't have to hang on to anything else. Just pure love and pure joy. So we're helping you rise above the old timeline, the old cycle. So none of that stuff is real anymore. And that means it doesn't have a reason to be loud and infectious and distorting in your energy field and now creating the echoes of a, of a differing reality, okay? So the next thing I need to do is, um, let me, just give me a second here. A lot has shifted in you. I don't even see you, the prisoner against the wall anymore. This creepy thing with the door, though, I need to look at that. Still kind of lingering here. And I say, you can move now. There's nothing holding you back. And there's all these weird creatures and freaks about in the uh, energy realm of your home. And I say, thanks for your service. Your time is done now. And they're like, what? What? Wait, what? I was allowed in here. So our time of service is done. I say, yeah, actually it is. Because this has all been reconciled now. So you actually don't exist here. Because you're from a different time. <laughs> so all the energy just disappears. That has been holding you back. It's been holding you down. That has been a total nightmare. This is, there's something still, so about this secondary version. I'm going to see the one at the cabinet is you, the cupboard. And the one stuck in the door is also you. Because I got this, there's something here that still has to be reconciled. But you could totally move about in here. And there, all these weird faces and these images and all that are just uh, totally dissolved. And I say, what is going on between this door and that that cat cupboard door? I was going on between this you and this you. What is going on here? You're stuck between, you're stuck. You're literally stuck. It's like a soul fragment or something. I say, you're not stuck. They are uh, 
to know that this was create self self inflicted is a bit shameful and embarrassing. So if they remain stuck, then that gives them the ability to acknowledge something is still not right. So they're off the hook. And it's like, you know what? There's literally no shame involved in this. This was pretty extreme experience. So there's literally no shame involved in this. You gotta let yourself go. You gotta just love yourself. Still struggling to process, um, just, you just like are becoming kind of robotic and you just not wanting to access just fluid motion. You're not wanting to dance. You're not wanting to be free. You're wanting to be stuck in order to continue to prove that something isn't right here. Why, why are you holding on to this? You, uh, you've now created uh, alternate and alter ego type and um, this is not going to feel like you because it doesn't feel like you but you created this one too and it's quite scary looking but this now you've given this one permission to control you so that way you can prove that this is real. <sighs> I say, do you want to be a puppet for the rest of your life or do you want to actually live your life for yourself? Do you want to, I mean, if somebody else victimizes us, then we're off the hook for literally everything that's ever happened in our life because we're the victim of something. So anything we ever did wrong, we can just say, well, I was a victim of this thing. And th then there's that. And then everybody just notices the victim of this thing and nothing else really matters. But if we're a victim of nothing, then anything that we ever do in our life or, you know, like there's something about owning up to who you are, owning up to what you like to do, owning up to everything without worrying about judgment, without worrying about criticism, without worrying about how you fit in or don't fit in. Just be yourself. But if you're a victim, then the, your identity is now specialized, is now identifiable. But if you're not a victim, who are you then? That's now a complicated reality. You, you're like, please don't do this to me. And I already see this like creepy alter ego thing disappearing. <sighs> like, you gotta stop this madness. <laughs> You're transforming again and your face now looks very freakish and scary. They say, let every part of yourself go and be free and be free yourself. Let your home go, let your home energy be free. Let your cars be free. Let all the energies in your life be free to be themselves. You don't get to control or to own any of this energy. Just let it all go. Start working with love. It's a lot better feeling. There's no guilt involved in it. There's no shame involved in it. All you can do is try your best and love yourself as you go along. Almost broken through this whole thing. A lot of exhaustion, um, just exiting the mind. The heart has a lot that's also just breaking down old energy barriers. You're starting to feel more flexible, more like you, because we're talking about freedom. The other version of you that's at the door just disappears. And you're just uh, simply in a kitchen. Getting yourself a glass of water. 
So you could decide that this glass of water is full of uh, energy parasites. And then you can drink it, and now the glass of water is that you just consumed a bunch of energy parasites. Or you could see the glass of water is holy and full of angelic love and healing. The more you identify the glass of water is full of love, the more you will feel that it is full of love. This kitchen is full of love. This living room is full of love. These bedrooms, these bathrooms, this basement, all full of love. The roof, the siding, the cars, all full of love. The garage, the, the sidewalks, the, the yard, the driveway, all full of love. Everything, the doors, um, the windows, the, the appliances, the cupboards, the, the actual, um, the beds, the, the couch, the TVs, the, like all full of love, all purely full of love. There's nothing else here but love. Now, that's the next thing that you're going to want to do is start identifying that you are in a space of pure love. That there's nothing else here but love. And that within yourself, there's nothing else here but love. And you are ready to mend all of this old cycle so you can actually feel connected with this new cycle. This new timeline, which is pure love. And you're going to welcome pure love to teach you how to work with pure love. And how to allow your reality to be a fa fabrication of that pure love. Uh, a lot. I mean, I just see a yet another layer of just energy jam. Which is just turning to dust, so to speak. And going away it's like a whole version of your house just turned to dust and just blew away because that was a another version of of the energy home that was connected to this huge issue so once that turns to dust and blows away we are we are accessing more of the true home the true home energy which is super beautiful and bright and nurturing and protecting of you and your cars are super bright and they're nurturing and protective of you. So if you feel insistent that there's still something wrong, you have to say, why am I doing this to myself again? Because there's actually nothing wrong here. It's time for me to let go. Let go of all the suffering that I want nothing to do with anymore because my cars are actually being looked over by angels my food my everything that you own is being looked over by angels the more you do this the more you will actually um all those echoes will disappear so it'll be totally gone and you will actually feel brighter and like you have a handle on your um, energy sensitivities, your psychic sensitivities, you're going to have more of a handle and a balance. Because you're totally picking up on stuff here. You are really picking up on stuff. And for you to pick up on this stuff that's trying to reconcile and for it to get full blown and sort of um, kind of uh, become a part, like a holographic real life part of your entire reality, um, that's how sensitive you are to energy, that you can do that. But you got to start, you got to decide though, what you want to, what you energies that you're wanting to be receptive to. And there's always going to be times where you're going to feel energy vulnerabilities because we're always purifying our soul journeys and stuff like that. But the more you start to learn kind of, um, I don't know, learn how to be in balance with the, with your gifts, energy sensing gifts and know the power of how you can control energy by saying it is bad or it is good, you create your own energy realities. So I'm telling you, if you start doing the opposite and now start saying angels are everywhere, you're going to manifest the most amazing life you could possibly imagine. Because if you could manifest this type of crazy nightmare, imagine what you can do with love. You could manifest a winning lottery ticket, a mansion to live in. You could manifest so much. Just shift gears, okay? You can do it. You needed this event to happen, though. 
You did. You needed this event to happen. You needed it to be this extreme. You needed it to feel all of these ways. You needed to get to it to get out of hand so that it could come to this point where you're like, oh, and now that you have had a major self-realization, it's going to be insanely hard to ever go through that again because you learned your lesson, right? You've learned your lesson now. So start working with love and see how crazily it pays off. <laughs> and working with love is just kindness, working with kindness, working with patience, working with being a good listener, working with asking your heart, what is the right thing to say right now? Or should I say nothing? Because maybe saying nothing is the right thing to say. You know, some you got to really hone into what love is and how love is expressed. And it's not a thought, it's it's working with pure energies of kindness and patience and you know all that stuff. Mm. Okay. You're going to notice in major, extraordinary, beautiful improvements in in your world, okay? In your energy field, in your home's energy field, with everything in your life. You're going to notice a huge improvement because we go through this deep self-realization within you and it's taking place now at the conscious level because you can watch these videos and you're going to see a huge shift in your life take place, okay? It's actually really exciting. I'm glad you explored this session and thank you for being open to sharing. There's so much we can learn from each other. It's, it's incredible. And for those um, of you watching, if you're interested in working with me one-on-one -on -one for a psychic session, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. All right, thank you again. I hope you all have a wonderful day.